Okay, people, so like I said, next topic is what we call trace tables. Okay, so a trace table basically goes together with any flowchart or algorithm. All right, it is basically a tool that we use to keep track or to go through an algorithm or a flowchart and then basically trace along and follow and just to basically keep track of where we are at at the moment and what is going on in the algorithm or flowchart. Okay, so if you think of when you were in art class in grade 4 or something, you had like an image at the bottom, you took another paper, a clean paper, placed it on top, and you took a pen and you traced along the lines. So that means just to follow, trace to just follow through a line or anything. Okay, so when it comes to trace tables in IT, that is what we are going to be using to just go through. If we look at, maybe for an example, this one is quite easy, but if we look at, or if I can give you an example of a flowchart that has like maybe two loops and one of the loops you repeat 30 times. Okay, once you go through it in your head, it's going to be very complicated and very difficult to keep track of, okay, what was X there at the top again? What was B? Okay, this was the 24th. Was it the 24th? No, it was maybe the 25th time I'm running this loop. Okay, no, um, let's start over again. You see, it can be very confusing if you are going through an algorithm and you do not keep track of where you are at at the moment or what valuables or what <laughs> what values other variables hold okay so a trace table will look something like this here at the bottom okay so normally it will have all your variables in nice columns um, you all know what a variable is right hopefully by now yes sir Okay, so a awesome. variable is basically just a placeholder that will get a value or contain or store a value. Okay, so if we look at this, basically this quick um, flowchart, you will see that the person has to input X. So obviously X is going to be a variable. We see, okay, there's a decision. So normally what I like to do, and just basic IT principles, you will see the textbook didn't do this, but I like to include my decisions as well in the trace table. You will see if I create my trace table in a second. Um, that just basically also helps you to just keep track of where you are. That's just basic um, etiquette. Okay, the next one we have is we see A is also a variable because something is going to be stored into it. You see the left arrow there that's pointing towards A. So what that means, it's kind of like an equal sign. So if you take A in your left hand, you'll see that is the left side and X div 8. You will get an answer and your answer will be placed inside of A. So it will be put into or stored into A. So we know A is going to be a variable. So that is why X was the one variable. A is another variable. If we go back, we see that, oh, cool, B is also a variable. We can see it gets assigned a value. So B will also be a variable. So I add B. What's next? I've got output B. So I know I've got a, a display or an output somewhere. So that's why I've got an output over here in my trace table. The next one is X. Um, gets the value of a so do I need to recreate X no because I already have X here in my trace table then I follow the loop I see okay cool I've done the whole bottom side of truth uh, branch of the decision let's go to the false branch I see there's another output okay and we already have an output over here in our trace table then I go to the last line I end I see okay cool I have all the inputs I have all the variables and I have all the displays. Okay, what I'll again like to do, and it's just basic uh, etiquette, is to add the decisions as well. Okay, so if I go and don't worry about creating a trace table, you will get the trace table. You just have to, you will get like literally this whole uh, grid, and you just have to do the insides. I'm going to explain how the insides work now. I'm just quickly going to create a trace table for myself. Okay. So trace table, all right, obviously it's, nope, 
they don't know how to spell it. Okay, so I'm gonna go insert quickly for me a table. I know one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's gonna be five by. Let's make it five by four. Okay, so the first one I know is gonna be X because that's the first one. The next one is the that decision I mentioned. So is X greater than eight? The next one I have is the variable A, the variable B, and then the output. Okay, so how this trace table works is you are going to go basically through a, a an algorithm or flowchart, and whenever something changes, like one of these columns changes, you will indicate it. So let's say uh, you will see here the first one it says complete a trace table for each of the two input values 33 and 75. Okay, let me before I forget I'm just going to go and copy this thing. Let me just put another one here. Okay. So the input for the first one is 33. Okay, so let's quickly go through and see what's the next set. Let's go to our flowchart. We go to start. Okay. So we see off the start input x okay so it says here for the first input it must be 33 so what will x's value be the first um, block over here Thirty-three. 33 because it says here input the value 33 so the input x will be 33 so we go to our trace table and we enter 33 as x Okay, then we follow the connector, we see it goes to the decision. Is x, so is 33 greater than 8? Yes. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. yes, it is. So I'm going to write true by my decision. Then we see, okay, it is true, so we're going to follow the yes or the true branch, which goes down. Now it says a gets the value of whatever x is let's go look here x has the value of 33 okay div 8 so 33 divided by 8 it's 4 so. okay so it is 4 8 16 24 32 okay so it goes into it four times remember we throw away the decimal so a's actual answer would be 4 the next one it says B gets the value of what is X mod 8 so what is X X is 33 what is 33 mod 8 1 1 sir. One. One. okay because if you go and say okay well it's 4 times 8 it's gonna be 32 so what is left over there's only one left over so our B will get the value of 1 Okay, great stuff. Then we move on with our connector. So you basically complete everything in every box and then you just move on. So if I move on, I can see the next one is output B. Okay, so I go to my output column and now I need to output B. Okay, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to just say that as a no. <laughs> Okay, because we are not going to just say output B. We want to go and look what is inside B at this moment. It is 1. So one. I want to output the B, which is actually 1. Okay, remember B stores a value of 1. If I say um, B plus 1, I'm not going to have 1B or B1. It's going to be whatever is inside B is 1, and then I just add another 1. Okay, so when you output, you basically take whatever's inside that variable. So in this case, B is 1, so I'm going to output 1. Then I follow my algorithm again. I see the next one says X gets the value of A. Okay, so what would X's new value be? 4, sir. 4, sir. 4. 4. Okay, oh. who says 37? Is there anyone that's voting for 37? Speak now for all your peace. Okay, fantastic. So it's 4. That's correct. 
Okay, so some of my kids in class couldn't understand why is it not 37? Why didn't I take my x which is 33? And then I say, okay, well, give it a's value also. So that's going to be now 33 plus 4, so that should be 37. Okay, the answer is no. It does not work like that. Okay, over here, if we look at the box, it says x, the holder, gets the value of whatever's inside a. So we're going to take whatever's inside a scratch everything out inside x so make it clean and give whatever is inside a over to x so you delete the 33 it gets lost it just gets thrown away and you take whatever's inside a put it in okay if it was something like x uh, gets the value of x plus a then yes then you go and see okay what is inside x it's 33 What's inside A? It's 4. So 33 plus 4 is 37. Fantastic. X's value would be 37. But it is not written like this. You can see these two is not the same. Okay. Fantastic. So that is why X gets the value of A. So X becomes 4. So now I go to my trace table. I go to my X value or my X variable. And I update it to 4 which is its new value. And then I just follow my flowchart again. I see it goes up again to the decision. Is x, which is now 4, greater than 8? No, sir. No, so it would be a false over here. And then where does the false path go? It goes to the no, and then it says output x. So I skip my a, it does not change. I skip my b, it does not change. I go to output. And what is x? 4, sir. 4. Okay, so I output my 4. And then I go and see, okay, the program end, so I'm done with this one. And that is how we use the trace table inside the flowchart. Okay, is everyone with me? Yes, sir. Uh, but sir, so I've got one question. What happens with that 75? With the 75? The next one? Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, sir. Oh, it, was that your answer? No, sir, I forgot that there's, there's another table below that. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Yes, people, so, okay, is there <laughs> any other questions before we get to that one? No, sir, it's okay. No, sir. Is that good? It's no, not, sir. But uh, when you have to, like, div x by 8 or and mod x by 8, um, you left it out by the second one does that mean you just write four automatically as the output yes because if we follow the path over here is x greater than eight we said false so if we look at the flow chart false means no so if we follow the no path do we update a or b somewhere no, no. we don't we don't so why is it going to update inside our trace table if we don't update it inside our flowchart? We will not update it. So that's why A stays then just the 4, B stays 1, and we follow our simple instructions. The next one is output X. So we go to whatever output or, or, or column, and we say, okay, what is X? And then we output our X. Okay, does that un uh, answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So you only update variables if it is updated inside the flowchart. That's why you go through the flowchart or the algorithm and you only do what it says you must do. Okay, any other questions? Uh, yeah. Yes, oh. shoot. Um, I just want to know, uh, for the test now, we'll, do we have to put true and false, both methods um, in both answers? Or both tables, or just what they ask us. Just what they ask you. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna give you, like, literally, I'm gonna give you the the the, the grid, and I'm gonna give you the headings. Okay. So y if there's something like a question or a decision, you just have to indicate if it's true, or if it is false. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. And then there's another question. I'm sure there was another question or someone tried to speak. Yeah, I heard them too. 
Okay, so if we look at another like flowchart like this one um, that's given over here, we can see our, I did the flowchart over here, but what I also did is at the right hand side, that is the pseudocode for or like the algorithm that is also there. So in the test or in the future, you can get either. You can either get the flowchart or you can get just coding or, or pseudocode like that, the algorithm in words, and you have to maybe make a trace table. Okay, so if we look at this flowchart, um, I'm going to show you how to set up a trace table, but remember it will be given, so this is just interesting to note. Okay, so if we go through it and let's see what or how many columns am I going to need. So if I go through the flowchart quickly, I can see how many variables do I have. Okay, who can identify the first variable in this flowchart for me? Anyone? Identify uh, the variable. Uh, maybe zoom into it. Oh, is it a bit? Uh, let me quickly check. Is there zoom? There's zoom. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's a bit blurry. Okay, can you see now? Yes, sir. Okay, what is the first variable in this flowchart? Count. Does everyone agree? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, count is the first variable. Why? Because count will hold the value. A variable is something that can hold a value or store a value. Okay, so yes, count will be the first one. So we have count. Okay, the next one we have is total. Total. Okay, then we see here, what is this? This is an input. So number gets the value of input number. Alright. Okay. So is number a variable? Yeah. I yes, want to say yes, yes. because it holds the input number. Yes, it holds a number or a value. So number is also one. Okay, then we get on and we see here's something count equals to count plus one. Okay, but we see we already have our count, so that's fine. We go to the next one, total equals total plus number. Mm, okay, fantastic. Then we get here to av, ave. We have not listed an average chest, but it gets a value, so that means that one I'm going to need to write down as well, because that's a variable as well, so average is also a variable. Then we go on and we say, okay, we're done with this box, so let's see what's next. Oh, here's a decision. Is average greater than 50? So let's write that down. Is average greater than 50? That's a decision. We need to add that one as well. Okay, we have a false option that just leads us back to the number input. Then we have a true option which has a display. Okay, so let's call this one display. We need a display as well. If we move on to the next one, we can see there's an end. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so that means all of these things I need to have in my trace table. So I'm going to go insert. There's one, two, three, four, five, six things. So I'm going to have six columns. And let's maybe give it just a few rows. Okay, so the first one we have is going to be count. The next one we have is going to be total. The next one is going to be our number. Then we have average. Then we get the is the average greater than 50. Okay, and then we have our simple display. Okay, so that is how we set up a trace table. We have all the variables. We have all the decisions, all the displays inside our trace table so we know our trace table is perfect again don't stress about it i'm gonna give you this whole trace table you just need to fill in the insides okay so let's see the instructions for this one is to input the numbers in order so where it gets to here number equals input number you are only going to input the first one 56 when it gets back to it you're going to enter the next one which is 46 then if it gets back, you're going to enter 41. So you're not going to enter all of these numbers. You're going to take one number at a time, move on to the next. Okay, everyone get the idea? Yes, sir. Okay, so yes, let's sir. go through this flowchart and see if it makes sense. So let's see, from the beginning, I'm going to move to the next instruction box, which says count is equal to 1. 
So I'm going to go to my count box over here. I'm going to set it as one. All right. Then I'm going to go and see. Okay, cool. I'm done with that one. What's left in the box? It's total equals 31. So I'm going to go to the total one. I'm going to update it and make it 31. The next one says number equals input the number. Okay, so input the number. The first one we have here is, cool, is 56. So my number will get the value of 56. Am I correct? True, sir. Yes. 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 yes sir. Okay, fantastic. All right. So the next one we can see we're done with this box. The next one is again an instruction saying count equals to count plus one. Okay, so here you can see I'm going to skip this average because it doesn't tell me to update average. It doesn't ask me the decision. It doesn't ask me the display. The next step it says count equals count plus one. So what is count at the moment? It is one. One. So what is one plus one? Two. Two. It's two. two. Okay. Then we see we go to the next one. Total equals whatever total was plus number. So whatever total was, total is... 31. What is 31 plus our number 56? 87. 87, sir. 87. All good? Everyone with me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Okay, so it changes here. My total changes, and that's why I change it over here inside my trace table. The next one we have is average equals the total divided or div count. So my total is 87. What is my count? It's 2. So 87 divided by 2 equals 2. Okay, so it's actually 43.5. So what's my answer going to be? 43. 43. I throw away the decimal because it says div. Okay, great. We are at 43. Okay, you see here, we don't have number because we didn't update it. Number is still 56. It didn't tell us anywhere here in this box to update number. Okay, so after we did the average, so we go on yes. I have a question. If it says um, divide instead of div, do we still add the decimal or do we like? Okay, if it's a away? forward slash, like this, or the 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 stripe with the dot at the top and at the bottom, like the normal divide sign, then you keep the decimal. Okay, oh, okay. unless it tells you to yeah. to divide and then around it or for whatever then but if you no. use the forward slash or you use the divide sign the, s the stripe of the two dots then yes you keep the decimal yeah. only when it says div you, you throw away the decimal okay uh, okay thank you sir. so that's average then we follow the connector to the decision is the average greater than 50 okay so that is this box over here or this, this column so is average greater than 50? No, sir. no, so it's false. False. Okay, so then we go and we follow the false path. It takes us right back to number equals input number. Okay, so we go to number and it says input number. So the next one is 46. Okay, so 46, I enter it. Then we go on to the next one. Okay, here we see count gets updated. Okay, to count plus one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this all like a row basically. Okay, because my count is going to update after this number, I'm just going to skip it because I see the next one should be average then I the if statement then display. So the next one gets to count, which says count equals count plus one. So what was count? It was two. If I add one, it would then be three. Then I go to the next one. Total equals whatever total was. So total was 87. And now I add, need to add it with number. What is number's last value we have? It's 46. So I go 87 plus 46. And now I see it's 133. The next one, average, is total divided by count. So my total is 133, and I'm going to divide it by count, which is 3. That will give me 44. 44. Okay, then we get again to the question. Is the average greater than 50? No, sir. No, it's not. So I'm going to have a false. false. Now you will see kind of a pattern going on over here. Okay, I'm not going to do display. I'm going to follow the false path. It says number equals input number. So the next number is 41. 
So I'm going to go to my number, I'm going to enter in my 41. Then the next one is count equals count plus 1. So what is 3 plus 1? It's 4. So next one, total is whatever total was. So I'm go look here, what was the last total I had? It was 133. Okay, I'm going to take that, I'm going to add my new number, which is, what was the last one for number? It's 41. So 133 plus 41, and that will be my total, 174. Okay, then we get to the next step. We don't update number, we go and it says average equals total div count. So what is my total? It's 174 divided by count. What is the last value we have for count here? It's 4. 43. So it's 43. Okay, 43. Then we say is 43 greater than, is average greater than, so is 43 greater than 50? Again, well, no, no, it's false. Then we go back up to the path. It says number equals input number. So we did 41. Next one is 49. So we go back to our number. We type in 49. Okay, I'm going to need a bit of more rows over here. Okay, 49. Okay, then if we follow the flowchart, count equals count plus 1. So 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay. Total is whatever total was plus number. So the total we can see here, if we look at the trace table, it's 174. And our new number is 49. So that equates to 223. Fantastic. Okay, next step is average equals my total. So 223 div my count, which is 5, will be a nice 44. 44. Fantastic. Okay, next step. Is my average 44 greater than 50? No, it's not. Oh, no, it's so I write my false. What is the next step? Okay, follow the false path. Go back. Number equals input number. Alright, so I did my 49. What's next? 55. So I'm going to go to my number. I'm going to enter 40, uh, 55 in there. And I'm going to carry on. I'm going to follow the connector. Then it gets back to count equals count plus 1. I'm going to go look. What was my count? It was 5. So 5 plus 1 is 6. Then I'm going to go to the next one. Total equals total plus number. What was my last total I got? Can you guys, even by just thinking, uh, if I'm following the flowchart, I couldn't even remember what was the last total I got. So that is why trace table is so important. If you run this a few times, you're going to get so confused. And that is what the trace table's goal is, is to help us keep track. Okay, so our total was 223. Our new number was 55. So that equates to a number of... 278. 278. Okay, so what is the next step? Average is my total, so 278 divided by my count. My count is 6. Okay, and then I'll get an 40. answer of... 46. 46. So remember, not 0.3, just 46, because it's div. Okay, is, then we get to the next one. Is my average greater than 50? Is 46 greater than 50? False. No, sir. False. So we keep on carrying on. Next one, number equals input number. If you follow that path of false, then we see, okay, next one I need to enter is 80. So I go to my number and I type in 80. So next one is count equals count plus 1. So 6 plus 1 is 7. Next one, total equals whatever my total was, which was 278. And I need to add my new number, which is 80. And then I get a number of... 636, sir. 636? Yes, sir. Why do Wait. I get 358? Sorry, sir. <laughs> okay, is everyone good? 358? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Bell Quinton, you guys still with me? Okay, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so 358. Okay, so where was I? See, I completely lost focus. So what was the last thing I did? I did total, so I can see in my flowchart total was the last thing. Ah, average is the next thing I need to do. Average equals whatever my total was, which is 358. And then div the count. What is count? It's 7. So 358 div 7 equals... 
51. 51. Next one. Is average greater than 50? True. It Please, is uh, true. 51 course. is more than 50. So, I'm at the last one. If I follow the true path now, I see display count plus a comma plus the total plus another comma and then plus average. So, if I go and see, okay, cool. What is my count? My count is 7. seven. Then it says a comma and a space. The next one is plus the total. What was my total? Three, five, eight. Yeah, I'm gonna then there's another comma here in the flowchart, and it has another space, and then lastly plus the average. What was my last average I got? Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Okay, and now if I go with the connector, I finish my flowchart. All good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions? I'm gonna. Should you 